Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and today I am back with a video that I plan to do on my booktube birthday, my 7th booktube birthday on this Sunday gone. It's over my shoulder, it's gone over there. However, I was a little bit bonkers at Hay and didn't get any time to film funnily enough because I was filming three interviews with authors for Sky Arts from Hay which will be coming at the end of June. However, I am back for a few days before I go back on site so I wanted to do it now. So this is kind of a belated booktube birthday celebration where I'm going to be talking about my seven favourite books from the last seven years on booktube. I've gone for fiction rather than non-fiction just because I tend to prefer fiction frankly. Also I'm going to go back in time so I'm going to start with the most recent favourite of mine from 2022 although my favourites of 2023 so far will be going live at the end of next month so that'll give you a possible taste of what might be the eighth to add to this list. I'm going to go backwards and let you know if I'd read anything by the authors before, have I read anything by them since etc etc and yeah I thought it'd be a fun thing to do and find out if my favourite books from those seven years are still some of my favourite books. I will say it was an interesting time going back over seven years worth of footage. There's been some questionable fashion choices, some questionable glasses choices, some questionable haircuts, but hey ho, that is life. I might feel very much the same way about all of this in seven years time if I'm still doing booktube. Anyway, let's get cracking. So my favourite book of 2022 will be no surprise to any of you who have been around since then or even back from the beginning. And also that's why I decided to go backwards because there's quite a few of you that are new now and hello and welcome. It's lovely to have you here. And there are some of you who I know have been here since the beginning, but it was a lot less of you OGs then than there are now. So yeah, I thought that would be a nice way to go back and maybe it'll help people discover books they might like that I have mentioned before but they might have missed but also be a reminder to people of books that they read a while back and want to have a chat with me about in the comments down below. I will finally hold up a book now after just over two and a half minutes of talking. So my book of 2022 was The Island of Missing Trees by Elif Shafak. The Island of Missing Trees by Elif Shafak. I had read Elif before this, I'd read two of her books. I'd read How to Stay Sane in an Age of Division, which, going back to nonfiction, is one of my favourite nonfiction books. It's a pocket full of power about how to use anxiety or worry and try and turn those energies into a positive, but also how the world has gone a bit loop-de-loop -loop and how we have to think about that and not end up in echo chambers and start a discussion debate rather than just shouting at people. That's not this book though. The other one that I read was 10 minutes and 38 seconds in this strange world, which I thought was brilliant. This one, however, like, just had my heart. It starts off that we meet a young girl called Ada. Her mother, Daphne, died a year ago. Her father doesn't really talk about where her mother and her father met, how they came to the UK from Cyprus, anything. And so when she's given the task of, over Christmas, finding out for homework, more about her family, she doesn't know where to start. And at the same time, her father is burying a fig tree in the garden for winter, and the fig tree starts to tell us their history because the victory came with them. And it's beautifully done. I think it looks at a period of history in Cyprus in a really, um, it, it, it's about Greek Cypriot versus Turkish Cypriot, of which Ada's parents are on either side of. So it's kind of got this star-crossed lovers element to it. There's also another brilliant love story that kind of comes to the fore that I thought was stunningly done. But also it's the way that this book looks so much at human nature and all of its foibles and all of its wonders but it's just the same with the natural world because as we're hearing the story from this fig tree we're hearing about all of the nature of Cyprus and the way that animals behave or how things have happened or there's one particular mosquito that I particularly didn't like and then there's a scene with a parrot that almost like well destroyed me frankly I cried quite a few times with this book I just thought it was stunning and I thought also the way it looked at Ada's story as a young girl who feels so displaced and lost and so othered I thought that was brilliant too so yeah I just think this is a fantastic fantastic book but you'll probably know that already because I have talked about it quite a bit. That said I do always want to find ways that I can bring books that I've really loved or even books that I've just really liked back onto the channel more than like a wrap-up or a haul a wrap-up or maybe a like 
summation once or twice a year where I select some summation a selection once or twice a year when I bring up like favorite books I don't know I need to think about that any suggestions let me know down below but there we go leave track so going back to 2021 and my book of the year then was Still Life by Sarah Women. I should say Alif Shafak is becoming one of my absolute favourite authors and I will be reading more of her books so yeah it is still a favourite as is Still Life by Sarah Women, which initially is about how two people meet during the war in Italy in a really random way looking at a piece of art in a church and they are Ulysses Temper and Evelyn Skinner. And this sort of friendship is formed that stays with them and lingers with them, even though at that moment, they may never see each other again, but they always think about each other and think back to that moment. And we follow Ulysses particularly from that point um, and how he ends up saving a man's life in Italy and how eventually that comes to return unexpected dividends but we also then leave him and Evelyn and go back to London where Ulysses is from and get to meet all the people in the pub where he lives what's been going on with him while he's away including Peggy his wife and it's just this brilliant cast of characters and brilliant collection of tales that sort of sprinkle into this much bigger story about these two people and will they won't they ever meet again i mean they might pass each other without knowing it's there's all that wonderful stuff going on as well as these fantastic sort of characters who come to life within just a few lines well sentences and also you might have like there's a murder story in one paragraph at one point in this book that like i just thought it showed how brilliant sarah's writing is it's a real celebration of europe and being european it's a book that's full of joy and a time in the world where there wasn't that much and i really thank sarah for doing that because i think this is the sort of fictional medicine makes it instantly like sound like something banana flavored that's awful that you only have when you've got a dreadful cough but what i mean is this is like a balm for the soul but not in a pretentious way it's just it's just a book of brilliance and joy and yes as you can see i still love it and i have read all of sarah's books but i won't say more on that now because she may appear again <gasps> imagine two authors in my favorite books of the last seven years yes yes there will be um Two authors, two books by the same author. Oh dear. Back in 2020, my book of the year was Hamlet by Maggie O'Farrell. And this is a fictionalised telling of the story of Shakespeare's wife, Agnes, and what happened to their son. Shakespeare is never named and he's not really around very much because he's off writing plays and acting and doing all sorts. It's very much about the family he leaves, his, he, the family he leaves behind particularly his wife Agnes who is one of my absolute favourite characters in fiction. I loved her. She's kind of got this otherliness but also this like real mother nature sort of almost mystical witchy kind of vibes. It's just brilliant. I just loved her. I just really really warmed her felt for her was with her. I was with her when she was falling in love with her soon to be husband who is not named and then when you are with her as her son dies Hamnet and the grief that follows I think it is written so beautifully like so beautifully it's a really haunting book and I'm discovering that I really like a book that is brutally beautiful and this is definitely one of those um the the story of Shakespeare's son Hamlet who died before he wrote Hamlet and the names could be interchangeable is, is like I said kind of the basis for this book but it really looks at uh, the love between a mother and son a mother and her children the love that we can have for family the love that we can have for the people that we end up in relationships with that aren't perfect and might be tested and yeah I just I just think there's so much going on here and also oddly considering there is a incredibly written scene about a pandemic in this book and I read it during the pandemic um it was a book that just stayed with me and I'm not gonna say it felt oddly uh not helpful or calming or I don't know but I was glad I had this book at that time so yeah that's just another another thing to add and I have my girlfriend has a very special place in my heart because 
she is one of the first authors I ever did events with um, and actually Sarah was the first author I ever did an event with but Maggie was another one of my first and also was the first author to come on a solo podcast I used to have because I used to do a podcast called The Readers with initially Gavin and then Thomas um, which I love doing and people say they'd quite like to come back and maybe one day maybe and um, we could do a reunion show at 20 years or something anyway I was like going with that oh yeah Maggie was also um, I did like a mini tour with her I think I said and she was the first person to do that podcast first author sorry to do that podcast and she was the first author to ever appear on this channel so yeah that's extra reasons why I love it and I have not read a Maggie O'Farrell book that I haven't loved she also has a special place in my heart because my gran gave me um The Vanishing of Esme Lennox one weekend when we were stuck in a rainstorm in Derbyshire and the electric went so we were reading by candlelight at night and I read that whole book in like a late afternoon into a late evening and it was just amazing and it bonded me and my grand's reading in a certain way too so there's lots of other emotions around uh why I'm a big fan of Maggie's but this book regardless of all that but also because possibly of all that, I just love for all those reasons. So there we are. Then if we go back to 2019, my book of the year was Girl, Woman, Other. I should say actually, this was the Women's Prize winner that year. And me and my mum, I don't know if that was the first year me and my mum read all of the long list together, but I think so. So there's also like, it's interesting, isn't it? How many memories and things that you were going through at certain times can tie into how much you love a book. Anyway, so 2019, even though I've already shown it, Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo, another favourite author. Um, I first read Bernadine Evaristo when she was shortlisted or longlisted for fiction and covered with Mr. Loverman and thought it was phenomenal. So I was very excited when this was coming out. Hadn't been back to any of others, I don't think, at that point, but I have since and I've loved them all. This book, I think, is such a fabulous book. It's kind of, so there are certain books, and actually this must be the place, this this must be the place, yeah, or this must be this place. This Must Be The Place by Maggie O'Farrell is one such book of the type I'm about to describe. I'm going off on so many tangents, wow. You're getting concentrated savage tangents right now. It's what, well, some of you may have been here and endured for seven years and some maybe seven days, seven minutes, maybe seven seconds, maybe you've already gone. They are patchwork books and by that I mean they don't come in an exact linear story. You kind of get bits here, there and everywhere and you stitch them all together. Now I will say this initially feels like it's linear as you go through the 12 stories of um, 12 mostly black, mostly women in this book and you get kind of a history of what it's like to have been a woman of colour from the early 1900s pretty much to the 20, well, 2019-ish, 2017 I think this one goes up to. And um, as you read on and these women's lives all start to link into each other in lots of different ways, some very surprising and I won't spoil for why, it's just this amazing, like I said, patchwork of a history of what it's like to have lived in the UK for all of that time, for all of these women and how that has in some ways created their personalities or influenced what they do. I love the fact that the characters are really foibled in some, are like, well, not foibled, but like all of them are flawed in like, like we all are, we've all got flaws. Come on, we have, don't you say you haven't because I bet you have. And I just loved that about it. And there is one sentence in here that will forever remain like one, I think it might be one of my favourite sentences in the world. I've even considered getting this as a tattoo. And it says here, with the stretch marks, Boomy thought looked like art and felt like braille. I just love it. I don't know if it's because Boomy was my favourite character maybe. I mean, I should probably say, let's read the beginning of it. Boomy made sure to sit behind the two women, Sister Moto with her back characteristically straight and proud, her light green boo-boo flattering her lighter skin. A Mophie, in contrast, was shorter, darker, with pleasantly rounded shoulders and attractively fleshy arms. Boomy wanted to reach out and stroke, as well as her thick, dimpled thighs and her ample, delectable hips. With the stretch marks, Boomy thought looked like art and felt like Braille. Oh, I just, I would actually quite like a whole book of Boomy, possibly. But anyway, if you see this, I don't know if you could make that happen. Um, but yeah, I just thought, actually, I could have had a book of every single character in this book because they were also amazing but there's something about that particular scene and that yearning that I just thought was so 
stunning. And that happens in a myriad of ways in this book with other different characters too. So yeah, it's just utterly phenomenal. Sorry, I have gone on and read almost all of Bernadine's books now. I think there's a poetry collection that I've not managed to get my mitts on that I would like to at some point. And then maybe I think I've left two of her novels. Um, but I read Manifesto, which was her memoir that came out and was absolutely, well, it's less a memoir and more a manifesto using moments from her life to, well, to, she shares them with you in order that you may take whatever you want to take away from them. And I think that's a very generous thing to do. So, yeah, so anyway, there we go. Sorry. Honestly, it's like I've got rusty or something. Let's hope this isn't a sign of things to come for seven years. I definitely want to get a bit more scatty over the place. And I was worried again, like last year, I got a bit serious on the channel, I think. And then this year, I don't know if you've noticed, if you've been around since the beginning of the year or since last year and seen what I think is a bit of change. I'm definitely back to having more fun and just going with the flow and filming when I want and blah, 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 with more tangents like I've just done. Let's get back to 2018 and my favourite book of the year, which was Flames by Robbie Arno. And I will link all of my favourite books of the year videos down below if you've missed them so that you can go and check them out. Even though, like I said, some questionable outfits, some questionable glasses and some questionable hairstyles. So please don't judge because the internet can be harsh like that sometimes. So what's Flames about, Simon, rather than any of that other gubbins? Flames is sort of a collection of short stories that come together to make a novel based around the magical and mythical world of Tasmania. And Robbiana has the capacity to write nature so beautifully. And I am realising that quite a few of the books that I love the most have been to do with nature as well. It's also been brutally beautiful because that bit that I just read, I think, in Girl with Another is brutally beautiful. This has moments of utter brutal beauty and also just utter brutality as human nature and nature collide in quite a lot of ways. I was very moved by some, what's the term I want to use? Just be warned, some animals don't fare so well and you get a bit attached to them and that's really hard. However, don't let that put you off because there's so much beauty and celebration of nature and where humans and nature can interact in beautiful ways. Like there's one story about a man and a seal that is gorgeous until it's heartbreaking. Also, wombats don't have a good time here and neither does, I think it's a King Bieber from what I remember. Anyway, Robbiana has this brilliant way of kind of, it starts off being a, about this man who, does it start off with the seal story or maybe it starts off with the tree story? It was the tree story. So first of all, we meet, um, a young man who is building his sister a coffin because he doesn't want her to come back after she dies because that's what happens in his family. It's what all the women are cursed with. They come back to life, they see their family again and then they burst into flames and he doesn't want that to happen to her. So he's building a coffin and then they happen to see a man swimming with a seal. And so that's how these stories kind of go. And then they do come back and they, they sort of link into each other and ebb and flow. And it's just wonderful. It's such a such a beautiful book and if you love myths and legends and folklore and nature and all that you'll absolutely love this it's still a favorite of mine i read the rain heron by him his second novel i thought that was incredible and limber lost uh was a book that almost made i think my top 10 last year but i read it right at the end of the year so i don't think i had enough time to sort of sit with it however i do think it is utterly incredible it's quite a different shift tonally i felt but i absolutely loved it look at this naughty pesky son here trying to get in on the action oi stop it i know i've got my summer beach shirt on but enough's enough so then we go back to 2017 is that right would that be right am i maths okay i hope so as i mentioned an author that appears twice in this list appearing again right now and that's Sarah Women with Timon and this book it's so short and sharp and concentrated and woof, that's the technical term it's about a trio of friends we have Ellis and Michael and Annie and it looks really at the relationship between Ellis and Michael over several decades and their friendship their friendship changes from platonic to something else. It shifts like that a lot. And I think the way Sarah Women wrote that was so beautiful. There is also a particularly haunting section in the middle, which absolutely devastated me. I will not tell you how or why if you haven't read it, because 
I want you to go and read all of these books. Um, but this is a book that has been one of the books that I've given to the most people because I feel like it genuinely shifts something in your soul a little bit. And those sort of books don't come around very often, but I just think it's it's interesting because with, not that I'm comparing the two, but we're still like, there's this epicness and this cast of characters that's so broad and wide and wonderful and you're just lost in this world. Here you're lost in this really intimate world of really mainly these three characters, Annie who kind of gets involved in, in a different way. It really focuses on these three people and what different kinds of friendship and different kinds of love and different kinds of acceptance mean. And I just think it's utterly, 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 utterly phenomenal. It's one of the most emotion packed books I think I've ever read. So yeah, it's, it's a fabulous book. And I have read all of Sarah's books. The first one I read was When God Was a Rabbit because that was when I interviewed Sarah for the first time. It was her debut book, one of her first interviews on one. It was my first ever interview. I interviewed her and um, S.J. Watson. Um, and we've done various events ever since. Um, but I, I recommend every single one of her books. Uh, Marvelous Ways is wonderful. What a fantastic character. Like, yeah, if you've discovered her through still life, definitely head back to everything else. And I can't wait to see what she writes next because it'll be fabulous. And then we go back to 2016, the year that I started YouTube. And my book of the year that year was The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry, a proper gothic historical novel about Cora Seaborn, who has recently been widowed. And she hears of this mythical creature that is apparently, I was going to say roaming, but slithering the wetlands um, of, I wanted to say Norfolk, but now that feels wrong. Oh no. Colchester. Is that Essex? Oh my God. It's called the Essex Serpent, Simon. What are you even on about? Wow. I know it's been seven years since you read it, but come on, you can read a title. Anyway, moving on from that mildly embarrassing moment. Um, so <laughs> it's about this mythical kind of serpent roaming slash slithering wetlands of Essex. Oh God. Um, and she wants to go and investigate and there she meets the townspeople who are all very interesting characters, but particularly Will who is I don't know if he's the vicar, but he's definitely like the religious person. See, this is where I'm going. Here's the vicar. There's a very sexy scene with him when he's very much at one with nature. And that's all I'll say. But nature, again, is coming to the fore. It's why I love it. I thought this was incredible. It completely and utterly compelled me. I couldn't put it down. I didn't want to stop. Well, no, it's one of those books. And I bet you lots of you have experienced these. One of those books where you can't put it down, but you also never want it to end. So you kind of slow down as you're reading it. That's what kind of book this is. And I blinking loved it for it. And I'm very grateful to have had it in my life. I've read, um, oh, what's Sarah's debut called? Where the Flood? Something about the flood. Hold on one second, caller. After Me Comes the Flood, which was her debut novel before this, which I remember I wanted to go and see um, her talk, but I just landed in the country and was reading it on the plane and when I landed. So I had really mad, bad, and dangerous to know, jet lag. And that kind of made me have this really trippy sensation with that book, which is already quite a trippy book. I didn't get on so well with Melmoth, but I think I had put too much expectations on it personally. I can't wait to see what she writes next. And I feel like we're due a book. Sarah, what's going on? She's also done some nonfiction about Essex Girls, which I thought was brilliant. I've got a real soft spot for this book, just because it reminded me why I loved all the Victorian Gothic novels when I was younger and then made me want to head to more sensation fiction and also when historical fiction is this good I could read it probably all the time but I think this is actually one of the books that I always compare any historical novel I'm reading to particularly if it's set in that sort of sensationalist era of the um, 1800s so yeah a fabulous book, still one of my favourite books, and I think will remain one of my all-time faves, as will. Oh, excuse me, I've vanished. I'm not being rude. I'm back again now. All of these, all of these have been favourites. They remain favourites. I would love to know in the comments below which of these favourites... Let's hold them up again. Why not? Let's give me a little workout. I could do with a few. I was actually 
imagining myself working out and trying not to laugh. If you've read any of these favourite books of mine, please let me know in the comments below. Um, also, just let me know any of the books that you've read because you've seen them on this channel and you've absolutely loved them because it was quite, it was easy doing this because these were my top seven, but I don't know how I'd be able to pick my actual, like if I went back, what are my seven favourite books of the last year, last year, last seven years that aren't these? Do you know what I mean? That I think would be a mission impossible. So I'm not even going to suggest I do it and don't you dare either. But no, I would love to hear what books you found and loved because of this channel. And I'd also love to know when you found this channel and yeah, that would be nice too. And also if there's any books based on those, but base them literally on these sort of books, not some wild cards, ladies and gentlemen, please. If you think there's any authors that are like these authors that I might like, or any of their books that I haven't read that I really should get to, I would love to know that in the comments down below too. Thank you so much for joining me and for visiting this channel, whether it has been the last like I said, seven seconds, seven minutes, seven hours, seven days, seven weeks, seven months, seven years. That's all we can go to. It has been a treat. The chats that I've had with lots of you have been wonderful. The book recommendations have been fab too. Let's keep the conversations going. It's lovely. And if you would like to head to my Patreon, my wish list, my Instagram, all those things, they're all linked down below. There's also a new second channel that I started last week called Savage Snapshots, which I'll link below. Very short, sharp, punchy vlogs uh, filmed over one day. Not every day, but here, there and everywhere. It's been a treat to talk to you as always. If you aren't subscribed and you'd like to, that'd be blinking lovely. And if you want to give this a thumbs up too, and if you want to leave a birthday cake as an emoji in the comments down below, as well as everything else I've asked of you, because why not ask for more? then that would be fabulous too. And I will see you in another video very, very soon. Here's to another seven years and not me getting a seven year itch. Bye.